I'm Eric Parker this morning on CT21. Connecticut makes a big move toward normalcy, opening up vaccine eligibility to everyone over the age of 16. What's the supply like and how about the demand as nearly a million more people are able to sign up? Connecticut COO Josh Jabal and the Commissioner of Public Health Dr. Deirdre Gifford join us this morning. Plus, what might we learn about UFOs? A report from multiple U.S. intelligence agencies is due out in the next couple of months. We're exploring what could come from it with a local UFO investigator. It's all this Easter Sunday, April the 4th. CT21 starts right now. From Channel 3, this is Connecticut's most watched current affairs program, CT21, with Eric Parker, sponsored by Hartford HealthCare. Good morning. One year and 24 days after COVID first officially showed up in Connecticut, all residents in our state over the age of 16 became eligible to receive vaccinations. That moment arrived this past Thursday, and nearly a million more people can now sign up. So how has the rollout been going? Here to talk about that is Josh Jabal, Chief Operating Officer for the state, and Dr. Deirdre Gifford, Commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Public Health. Josh, I want to start with you. You were on this program a few weeks ago right after that pretty controversial decision to switch to age-based groups. Just this week, we saw Dan Har from Hearst Connecticut Media say that that was saving lives. The death rate had dropped. Do you agree? Is it a success? Uh, good morning, Eric. Uh, it is. I think the data is really starting to accumulate that shows that, that that was the right call that the governor made to prioritize those in the older age groups that are most at risk of, of severe illness and death from COVID-19. We got them vaccinated early at very high percentages. And as a result, we've seen the number of people dying from COVID-19 falling much more rapidly than even our neighboring states who otherwise are dealing with a very set of similar set of circumstances and approaches. So I think I think it's turning out to be pretty clear that that was the right call. Dr. Gifford, I want to turn to you now. The one thing we have seen, though, is the percentages creeping up, the hospitalizations creeping up. I know there this is a technical term, so I don't want to say it's a wave. I'll let you weigh in on that. But is it uh, something to be concerned about? Well, it's certainly something that says um, we need to to stay the course a little bit longer in terms of our mask and social distancing in particular. Even though about um, uh, a third of our eligible population uh, is uh, vaccinated and um, you know, up two thirds of people over 45 have received their first dose, um, that doesn't mean that, that the risk of spread is gone. So we do need to, as we've been hearing from uh, public health officials nationally and at the local level, we do need to stay the course for a little while longer uh, to make sure that this doesn't turn into another wave. We heard just this week, uh, Dr. Gifford, that Yale uh, put out word that a lot of younger people were having more issues. Is that part of the concern that as we as a society begin to talk about these vaccinations, maybe people are playing a little fast and loose with the rules and not being as careful as they were even just a few months ago? We're certainly hearing that, uh, Eric, from our providers, that they see a sense of uh, that, uh, you know, the, we're past the worst of it. We, For a while, the younger age groups have been the most common to, to have an infection, that they've had the highest rates of infection. So we know that that's been the case for a while. Um, now, as Josh was saying, because older individuals are not uh, being hospitalized, we're seeing that shift to younger age groups. And there may be something with the variants you know, there's concern that some of these variants may cause a more severe uh, infection, and that may have something to do with the fact that we're seeing younger individuals in the hospital as well. So it is, so it is important, although we're celebrating uh, a vaccination just a year into the pandemic, um, that's terrific news, but it, uh, we also have to remember that the, the infection's not, not uh, gone from our community yet. Josh, obviously being the chief operating officer for the state of Connecticut is a job bigger than just being the COVID guy, but you are the COVID guy. You're the face for this uh, administration about COVID. How much of your time is that still consuming and, and what are the next steps? What should be the mileposts we should be looking at? 
Uh, it, it's still uh, something that we all spend a lot of time on. We have a great team, though. Uh, Commissioner Gifford and her team at the Department of Public Health, you know, they've been working seven days a week for over a year now. And as have a lot of our partners and other state agencies and, and other uh, nonprofits and uh, municipalities, it's been an incredible team effort. But, you know, we are we are starting, I think, to see the light at the end of the tunnel very clearly. The data that uh, that's so compelling about how effective these vaccines are, all three of them, um, and as we get more and more people vaccinated, the fact that it's not just preventing severe illness, but it's also preventing infections in the first place gives us a lot of hope that we're gonna, we're going to be able to reclaim more and more of our time to, to focus on other business uh, before too long. But as Commissioner Gifford said, until we get a higher rate of the overall population vaccinated, we do need to stay focused and keep our guard up. When we had uh, the one year from our first case passed a couple weeks ago, the governor was nice enough to join us. And one of the questions I asked him was, will there be a day where he walks up to a podium and says, that's it, the mask mandate is over? And I was surprised. He very quickly said that will there will be a day. That's going to be a thing. Do you agree? And are we approaching that thing? You mentioned light at the end of the tunnel, Josh. Are we getting closer to that day? You know, I I, uh, I would, would never second guess my boss, that's for sure. But I, I, I and I think we, you know, I mean, I defer to Commissioner Gifford. She is the public health expert here. Um, you know, whether there's a, that dramatic moment, um, I hope so. Uh, but I think with most things related to COVID, there's a lot we don't know about what the future is going to hold. And Dr. Ko uh, from Yale School of Public Health is one of our key advisors, always reminds us we need to be very humble when it comes to COVID making uh, predictions about what the future is going to bring. But we're all looking forward to the days when we can start to get completely back to normal. Well, Dr. Gifford, what do you think about that? Um, obviously not trying to say that the governor was right or wrong, but he was quick. He gave a quick answer and said he'd like to have that day. Do you think that day is something that, that will come where we'll just say, that's it, we're good, no more masks? Well, the pandemic will end. Uh, that, you know, there will be a, a time when uh, COVID is in the background. We don't know if it will ever go away 100%, um, but uh, certainly there's a, a strong hope and a very strong possibility that, uh, you know, when we have herd immunity and high levels of people vaccinated and immune, we won't see lots of COVID circulating in the community. And, uh, and it won't be necessary for all of us to have masks on when we're, when we're out in public. One of the big questions I'm hearing from people, Dr. Gifford, is what about after you've had that, that vaccine? A lot of people, and we put out some of that guidance, but a lot of people are still wondering, what is it okay to do? So give us the health perspective. If someone has been vaccinated, one dose, two doses, what do you tell them? What are they okay to do? Well, uh, first of all, with this respect to one dose or two dose, if, you, if you're getting one of the so-called mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer or Moderna, you're not considered fully vaccinated until two weeks after your second dose. So until that time has elapsed, uh, you should consider yourself to be susceptible and wear your mask and keep your distance just like you have going all along. And that goes for two weeks after your, your single dose of J&J. &J. But once you're fully vaccinated, then, uh, you know, the CDC has put out guidance about uh, gatherings uh, within your home uh, without a mask with other vaccinated people, small potential gatherings, uh, very small with uh, people outside your household. Um, and I think the CDC will, based on research that's come out this week in particular about the fact that vaccinated people are unlikely to be carrying or transmitting the virus, I think we'll be seeing more guidance very shortly from CDC about other activities that vaccinated people can engage in. Um, in the meantime, you know, we're still advising a little bit of caution when you're out in public, particularly if you're somebody with, uh, that lives with someone that's susceptible to COVID, uh, keep the mask on uh, for a little while longer. All right, we're going to uh, take a quick break here at this point. We're going to talk to you both more after this break about the actual process of vaccines and where it stands in our community. So we appreciate it if you both stick with us just a moment. Coming up later in our Sunday Spotlight, what really is out there? The Pentagon and other U.S. intelligence agencies will be releasing a highly anticipated report in the coming weeks on UFOs. We're digging into what their findings might mean with a local UFO researcher right after this.